Mark chapter number 13, we'll begin our reading verse number 1. The Bible says this, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, I'm thankful we're headed to Beulah land. Lord, I'm thankful you're a wonderful Savior that came to where we were when we were lost in our sin. Lord, you put somebody in our way. Somebody gave us a gospel tract or somebody preached to us or somebody uh, brought us to church or many folks could testify in many different things of how you first came to them and let them know that there was a better way. There's a way of salvation for sinners. And Lord, we're thankful for the gospel. We're thankful for the good news of Jesus Christ who came seeking to save that which was lost. We're thankful for the death, burial, and resurrection of our darling Savior. Thankful for the shed blood of Calvary. We're thankful for the word of God, the saints of God, the house of God. God, you have been good to us and you have blessed us and we are so appreciative and grateful tonight. Lord, again, we've enjoyed the good singing. We've enjoyed the good testimonies. And Lord, we're thankful for them. I pray for this uh, dear missionary lady, Lord, that you would protect her and help her and win many souls in Croatia. And God, uh, uh, other missionaries on the foreign field, some of them in volatile areas, I pray you'd put a hedge about them. And God, you'd use them in a great way. I pray for the people of Ukraine tonight. There's a lot of good churches in Ukraine. And God, I pray, Lord, you'd help these dear folks and what they're faced with tonight. It's only by the grace of God we're not uh, being overthrown tonight with uh, bombs uh, hitting our towns. And God, I just pray for those uh, dear folks over there. Now, Father, i thankful Miss Lynn's home from the hospital. I pray for her. I pray you'd give her full recovery. I pray, Father, for Miss Janet, who may be headed to the hospital you touch that dear saint of God and help her. Lord, I'm thankful Brother Bob's back with us tonight. I pray for him that uh, you'd give the doctors the wisdom to help him. And, and Lord, touch his vision. And then, Father, I pray for little baby Ivy that's sick. And I pray for little baby Malin. God, you'd touch her. And God, I certainly am thankful Miss Lindsay and little baby Denver are home from the hospital. And God, you've just uh, done wonderful things in hearing and answering prayer. And Lord, thank you for what you've done for Caleb this week. And God, I do pray for Aaron. I pray for her tonight. I pray that, God, wherever she's at, you'd speak to her heart. We'd see her get her heart right with the Lord. Uh, now, Father, help us tonight. Lord, we need your touch. Without your touch, we're not much. And God, I certainly pray the word of God would go forth and encourage and edify your people God, we certainly pray in a crowd this size that for somebody unsaved, the Lord tonight would be the night of their salvation. Lord, arrest our hearts now. Put a hedge about us. Speak, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things from these verses. First of all, I want you to notice the probing. In verse number 1, it says, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Now, can I say this is not a question where the disciple is seeking some understanding from the Lord. This is a question where he is tempting the Lord. Somewhere along the line, this disciple heard Jesus uh, make a statement, you'll find it in John chapter 2, uh, where Jesus said, destroy us this temple uh, and I'll rebuild it in three days. Of course, we know the Lord was talking about his uh, own personal body, that he was going to die and that he would raise again on the third appointed day. Uh, but here this disciple, and it doesn't name him, probably was uh, either Thomas or Judas Iscariot, uh, 
Uh, neither one of them were very spiritual, and Judas wasn't even saved. Uh, but they're tempting him. They're probing him. Uh, he's saying, look at these stones. Uh, he's saying, how could this be destroyed and rebuilt in three days? Uh, You've got to understand, the stones that he's talking about, the stones were marble slabs uh, that were uh, some 40 cubits long, which is about 60 feet, 60 feet of stone. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Josephus tells us in the War of the Jews uh, that uh, when that temple was hit uh, and came under siege, that uh, 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 it wasn't even uh, uh, hurt when uh, uh, others were throwing stones and uh, shooting things against it uh, because of how massive it was. Uh, the pillars uh, of the temple uh, were 25 cubits high, which is about uh, uh, 40 feet, uh, and it's all one piece of marble. And this uh, disciple is probing, tempting the Lord. Uh, he's certainly doubting that God uh, uh, knows what he's talking about. So we see the probing. Now notice the prophecy. Look, if you will, verse number 2. And Jesus answering say, said unto him, Seeth thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down. Now Jesus is not talking about his physical body right now. He's talking about the temple. And can I say uh, about 60 years after uh, the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord, uh, 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 Rome did come against Jerusalem and did destroy it and utterly destroyed the temple. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, and the whole city was destroyed and not truly rebuilt until 1948. So we see the prophecy. We see the probing. But then I want you to notice the private inquiry. Here's the proper way to talk to the Lord. Look what happens in uh, verse number 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple... Peter and James and John and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Here we find four of his disciples who are truly seeking answers from the Lord. Does not the Bible say, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you? Notice they privately, they're not being smart alecks. They're not trying to probe him. They're not trying to put him on the spot. They're not having doubt in their heart. They are privately seeking answers from the Lord. Uh, and notice what happened. Can I say uh, 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 sometimes the best time uh, uh, to get some help from the Lord uh, is get your Bible, uh, get in your prayer closet, uh, and start asking the Lord uh, uh, something that is really uh, uh, probing your heart. Uh, and, friend, you'll find that the Lord will speak to you, and he'll show you some answers. Uh, so we see these private inquiry. Well, with all that in mind, this is what I want to preach on. They're asking him, Lord, when is all this going to happen? I'm going to preach on the last days. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of eschatology because I don't have a throat for it, but I'm going to give you, out of this text, some signs to the Jews what will transpire in the last days. Now, keep in mind, the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews required a sign. Uh, you get into real dangerous territory as a Bible believer when you start asking God for signs. God's done give you the absolute final authority you'll ever need. It's called the Word of God. Uh, quit trying to be lazy and asking God to send you a sign in the sky and get your nose in your Bible and ask God to show you His truths, and He will. And, uh, but my dear friends, uh, I've heard people say, well, you've got to put out a fleece. Or I've heard people say, well, I had a dream. I heard I... No, you've got the King James Bible. That's all you need. Hmm? Anything else I wouldn't put any stock in. Uh, I don't know how many times I've had to have that dream question. Preacher, I had a dream. Uh, quit drinking Pepsi Colas and eating banana and peanut butter sandwiches before you go to bed, and you don't quit having them dreams, all right? Uh, take you some melatonin, you'll go out like a light. Boom, huh? But uh, folks, get you know, they put more stock in dreams, which, well, by the way, tells their spirituality, than the Word of God. I don't know, know what God says. So the Lord's about ready to give His disciples some prophetic truths concerning the Jews. Now, 
you've got to understand when you're looking at prophecy and he's talking to the Jews that might not apply to the church a lot of people get a lot of things messed up and so I do want to look at the atmosphere of the last days it was described by our Lord can I say first of all the last days will be deceptive days look if you will in verse number 5 and Jesus answering them began to say take heed lest any man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many so we know in the last days there will be deceptive days now can I say there's not a lot of people who will boldly stand up and say I'm Jesus Christ but there are people who will boldly stand up and say they know the way to heaven but they're excluding the biblical way of salvation as we sit here tonight there are over 300 different denominations and religions being taught in the United States of America can I say they all claim to have the way there are people that believe you put a bunch of crystals around your house and you reach a, an age of enlightenment there are people that believe that you can uh, you are reincarnated and you'll come back as a grasshopper isn't that a step down huh how about that crowd thinks that cow out in the backyard is their grandpa I mean that's a step down I mean you know think about it but people believe that there are people uh, who are taught in ancestry worship they have little altars in their house worshiping their ancestors uh, there are people who worship Mary there are people who worship uh, uh, all kinds of things that are not the biblical way to heaven Jesus saith unto them I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me there's only one way to heaven whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved uh, uh, the only way to heaven is through the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, he became the propitiation of our sins uh, there are people that believe you got to be baptized to go to heaven there are people that believe you got to speak in tongues to go to heaven there are people that believe in all kinds of things uh, uh, can I say uh, there'll be deceptive times uh, uh, do you understand that uh, even more than most Bible believers the devil knows uh, uh, the end times are upon us uh, he knows his time is short uh, he is uh, pulling out all the stops to damn as many people as he can to hell he's a liar and the father of it he was a murderer from the beginning and can I say there's deception in religion there's deception in preaching can I say there is a there is an earmark of deception in preaching in our fundamental circles I'm hearing stuff come out from behind Baptist pulpits that are not biblical truths we find that there are people playing on emotionalism and excusing it for Bible there's all kinds of things going on I know of a young man uh, uh, who was told by a, a popular preacher it doesn't matter what your pastor says you do this a young man that won't submit to the authority of his pastor will not go very far in the ministry I can tell you that God will never use a man that won't submit to authority and there's all kinds of things being taught that are deceptive and the key of most of it is is they have false Bibles over 50 different false versions of the scriptures there's only one Bible the Holy Ghost only wrote one book anything else at best is a commentary and most of them aren't even good for that most of them just good to wipe your feet off when you got mud on your boots that's about all they're good for and yet people are being deceived I know of an independent Baptist church pastor they lost their pastor and they sought to get another pastor and they put in a man who used an NIV because they liked the object lessons that he used show me chapter and verse where God said to use object lessons he said well that's a good way to learn preacher well but the Bible says God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them I believe uh, you can have an object lesson that might not take you to heaven but the Bible will Mm. say preacher you're so narrow minded yep I'm about that about that, that, that narrow right there 
We live in deceptive days. The problem is there's a lot of people that's been entertained. They've been puppeted. They've been object lessoned. They've done all this stuff. They get to 18. They're out in the world. And they never, ever come back to the church. You know, but you know what? When they get born again, when conviction hits their soul and they get born again and they put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? They just hang out at church. Huh? Well, now that made some of you mad. Hang on, I'll make the rest of you mad before it's all over. The last days will be deceptive days. I could go on for hours there. But can I say the last days will also be destructive days? Look at verse 7. And, ye shall, uh, and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. As we are sitting here tonight, we know of the war between Russia and Ukraine, but there's about 60 other wars going on in the world. You don't know about them because don't impact us they don't have oil they don't have things we need hmm? let me just say this I wasn't going to be too ugly but I don't feel good wrong night sit on front row big boy you do realize that we're funding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. You know that, don't you? Three people know that. Wasn't it wonderful the governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, had a big campaign for all the liquor stores to not sell Russian vodka. How about let's just close all the liquor stores? People think that's the greatest thing in the world. Do you realize they've already bought it? They're not hurting Russia by not selling Russian vodka. That's the most asinine thing I've heard of in a long time, but people are cheering it. Oh, that's wonderful. It's really going to hurt Russia. We've already bought it. Do you realize mashed potato brain Biden, day one, closed the Keystone Pipeline that made America energy de independent. We didn't have to depend on OPEC. We didn't have to depend on anybody for oil. He closed that day one. And now he's buying oil from Russia. So the oil we are buying from Russia is actually funding the war against Ukraine. So the sanctions that he has po opposed, you know, proposed on Russia, you think that upsets Putin? You want to hurt him? Quit buying oil from him. But he don't want to hurt him. He's made too much money from him. And by the way, he's made money from Ukraine too. They employed his son all ridiculous but can I say the last days will be destructive days what's going on up there in Canada huh we got an idiot dictator up there who has frozen the bank accounts of truck drivers who has went and taken the dogs out of their trucks and put them in a pound and say, you got a week to break the convoy or we're gassing your dog. What kind of twisted mind is that? Huh? And the police have went and drained the gas out of the truck's tanks that are in the convoy. How do you expect them to move? I mean, these are supposedly smart people. That's just north of us. We've got I guess you call him a president who is advocating for the border of Ukraine but he won't even close our southern border and over 250,000 people every month are coming here and they've caught known terrorists and they are taking these terrorists and flying them all over the country and dropping them off probably putting them up in real nice places while Americans 
can't even get all the groceries they need because they're not at the stores. I'm telling you, this thing has gone crazy. Listen, don't buy the narrative that we can't get stuff because it's on barges out in the ocean. We don't get cheese from China. We don't get lunch meat from China. We don't get biscuits from China. All these things that are missing on our shelves is by design. You understand this, don't you? They're trying to cripple the American economy because America, when she's strong, will never buy into an antichrist. But when America can't feed herself, and America can't fund herself, and America can't defend herself, guess what America will do? America will follow anybody. Hmm? I mean, there's very few exceptions. I'm talking about we got rednecks in here. But there are very few exceptions of anybody in here that could live off the land. He maybe could for a little bit. For a little bit. Uh, but we couldn't do that. Tommy, I want to see you go skin a deer. Yeah. No. Huh? Hmm? But think about it, friend. You got one on the front row and one on the back row. All the rest of us, we're going to have to move in with them or we ain't going to eat. You see, all this is lining up. The world's got to collapse and for, uh, in order for the son of Satan, the Antichrist, to stand up and say, I got all the answers. And he'll be so charismatic and he'll have the answers and everybody will fall in line so there will be a one world government, a one world religion, one world, all of it. My dear friends, we're headed that way. There'll be destructive times. Times. You see, it's all got to be destroyed and blown up. Hmm? Explain to me why Bill Gates is buying farmland all over America. So you can't have milk. So you can't have cheese. I mean, this thing's gone crazy. Hmm? I was told there were Republicans standing up and cheering last night at the State of the Union address. I, I, you know, if I wanted to watch Comic Relief, I'd have watched, uh, you know, Everybody Loves Raymond. I wouldn't have watched that. But it's both sides of the aisle are in on this thing. These lifetime politicians that's been up there, Mitch McConnell from Kentucky is one of the worst. They've been there 30, 35 years and gotten rich off the taxpayers of America and all the while making you think that you're appreciated. i got to move on, gosh. I'm way behind. The last days will be disputed days. There'll be disputing going on. Look at verse 8. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're there. COVID was a test run to see if they could control people. Now they're putting in the plan on how they're going to control people. Hmm. Isn't it amazing? When their jobs are on the line, COVID goes away. The science change. Yeah, political science. Hmm? It was never about the, the virus. It was always about them infiltrating your lives. So, preacher, you saying there wasn't a virus? I didn't say that. There's a virus. There's always a virus. It was COVID-19. That means there were 18 other COVIDs before that one. There's always a virus. There was SARS. There was bird flu. There's always something... I'm still waiting for them killer bees to get here from down South America to kill us all. There's always something. It's putting people in fear. Because when you have no hope and you're in fear, you'll trust them. Where's Fauci at? Grouchy Fauci hadn't been on the airs in months now. Why? Because you see him now, you see liars stamped on his face. That's why. It's disputing days. The last days will be devastating days. Look again, verse 8. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Now again, this is a prophecy to the Jews. 
the times of J Jacob's troubles about ready to be ushered in is what he's saying. He's saying the great tribulation's about ready to show up. The vision of Daniel's about ready to take hold, Daniel chapter number 12. And he's preparing them. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. It's hard to fathom. Brother Jack's the only one that's old enough to remember in the late 1800s there would be one earthquake a year. You are the oldest man here. Used to, I used Bob. Bob pointed out to you, who's older? Oh, that Jack. We use this Jack. Yeah, he is older. Jack, Jack Jones. Sorry, Brother Jack. The other brother Jack. Pick a Jack, either Jack. In the late 1800s, there'd be one earthquake a year. Now there's so many, they don't even talk about them. How many terrible hurricanes have we had in the last decade? How many places in Africa are in great famine, can't feed themselves? It's happening all across the globe. It's devastating times. But can I say also in the last days, it'll be depraved times or depraved days. Verse 9. But take no heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. He said, they're going to be so wicked, they're going to try and destroy you because you stand for truth. You stand for me. Two years ago, we were told the church was non-essential. Hmm? All across the country, there are churches that have not recovered from COVID. You all know our plight. The governor came against us. I said, nanny, nanny, boo-boo, we're still here. The truth of the matter is, they hate us. They hate what we stand for because we do have faith in God, not government. We depend on God, not government. We have the truth. They hate that. You see, they can't hoodwink people that have the truth. Now, folks that don't have their nose in the book, they'll believe whatever, whoever tells them. But if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. They don't like that. They hate that about you. They hate that they can't control you. They hate that they can't pass laws for you to not pass out gospel tracts because you're going to do it anyway. And they hate that you're going to tell somebody about Jesus. And they hate that on a Sunday you come out and worship Jesus instead of going to the golf course. And they hate everything about us. As we get closer and closer, it's coming. I don't know how much closer we can get. Friend, there'll be more persecution. I mean, the Biden administration tried to demonize people that refused to get an injection. They said they were going to kill everybody. Now, I don't want you to remember that, but that's what he said. If you didn't get vaccinated, you're just going to kill everybody else. Well, if the vaccine was so great, why do you care if I got vaccinated or not? Vaccinated or not? I mean, if yours is so good... And if your face diaper is so good, why do you care if I wear one or not? They hate on a Wednesday night we come out and fellowship and sing songs of praise to God and worship God. And they hate we're going to have a revival. And they hate it. Hillary, what did she call us? Yeah, we were deplorable. Obama called us clinging to our God and our guns. Biden can't remember what he called us. It's true. It's sad. Huh? I mean, we laugh at him. What do you think the rest of the world does? You know why Russia didn't invade Ukraine the last four years? Because the man sat in the White House. Huh? No wars anywhere when Trump was there. Hmm? You know why we're in a war now over there? He's got to do something for his approval ratings. 
Hmm? Every time the Democrats are in office, we end up in a war. <clears throat> the depraved days. But let me give you something that's good. The last days will be devoted days. New verse number 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Even in the midst of devastation and destruction and wars and depravity and everything going on, you know what is a main constant? The gospel is still being preached. Gospel is still being published. Missionaries are still being sent. What a blessing, huh? Because that's what the church was commissioned to do, to preach the gospel to every creature. And the gospel is still being put out there. Do you realize that even through you know, the internet and, and so many resources, we're getting the gospel out more than we ever have before? What a blessing. Hmm? The gospel is still ringing loud. They're the years of sinners that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And the gospel will be published up until Jesus comes. The rapture of the church. What a blessing. That we know there will be devoted days. Listen, there will be a remnant of God's people when Jesus comes back for his church. Church isn't going down. She's going up, friend. Huh? I'm glad we're on the winning side, aren't you? And then I thought about this lastly. The last days will be divided days. Look at verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. There will be divided days. I never would have dreamed. I know I'm old, but I would never would have dreamed that in the United States of America, neighbors would have turned in neighbors for having parties without masks in the backyards. But that happened. Ask Christian. The sheriff's department got calls. So we saw somebody walking down the street without a mask on. We better be glad I didn't. I said, well, did you shoot them? <laughs> I mean, they're so heathenistic. But the reality is in the last days people will turn on even their loved ones. We don't see it. It's a foreign concept to us because, you know, we've, we've become so soft and we've had it so good in America. But, you know, in other parts of the world where there are underground churches where they do not have freedom of worship, there are brothers that turn on brothers. There are fathers that turn on sons. There are neighbors that turn on neighbors. And they turn them in. And those people are persecuted for the audacity of worshiping Jesus Christ. But it's coming to America. I've never seen a day and age where children are so disrespectful to their parents like today. Hmm? I'd been toothless if I'd have said some of the things I've heard kids say to their parents. Hmm? Uh, I mean, I cannot believe that we've raised generations now that have no respect for authority. They don't respect their parents. They don't respect law enforcement. They don't respect the preacher. I remember when you didn't call the preacher by his first name. Hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. If I'd have done that, my mom would have beat me half to death. Huh? You just didn't do it. Hmm. My pastor's brother, Junior Pittman, to this day, I call him Brother Pittman. I don't call him Brother Junior. Because that's Brother Pittman. Now, around here, I've given you the license to call me Brother Doug because when I first started preaching, I was young. And Brother Foster sounded so ancient to me. Well, Brother Bob, there's still people just call me by my first name. Lack of respect. It's 
See, there are divided days of coming. Can I say that is the push to bring America down right now? The news media and the politicians are trying to divide America. The first thing they're using is the race card. They're trying to divide everybody by race. Hmm? Then they're going to start dividing people by their economic statuses, by their educational status. And they just continue to divide and fracture and splinter because when there's unity, friends, you're strong. But when you're divided, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And there's a great push. I am blessed to travel all over the country. You know that. I don't find in America what is being portrayed in the news media. I don't find it. Most people I come in contact with think like we think. I picked up some tile today from a tile store. Huh? And the manager come by and he went to say something. He mispronounced a word. He said, boy, wasn't that a great word? I said, you've been listening to Joe Biden. And they laughed. They said the same thing. They just called him mashed potato brain. They didn't call him mashed potato brain, but they referred to him as mashed potato brain. You know, everybody sees the same thing we see. We're not a divided nation like they want to portray. Matter of fact, all the burning of our streets that happened two years ago and all the stores that were looted and everything, those were people who were hired to do that. Huh? How come the media just happened to be right there when it all happened? Huh? We can't even figure out who shot JFK, but boy, the media's right there. It's divided days. It's happening in our churches. The devil wants us to be divided. Because without unity, there's no unction. I'm glad we got a church where folks want to worship the Lord, want to be obedient to God, want to see sinners saved, want to see a difference made in our community. Said so all that, say this, folks. We're living in the last days. It's time to get our houses in order. It's time to get the gospel out. It's time to let people know Jesus is coming. Now keep in mind, the church is taken out seven years before the Lord literally comes back. And friends, we're, we're living on borrowed time. If we're going to do anything for God, we better get buckle up and get it done. Because Jesus is coming. I'd like to tell you we've got another 20 years. I don't know. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. I don't know. But I know one thing. He could come back tonight. Are you ready? Do you know that you know that you know that you've been born again? The preacher, I know I'm saved. Well, what are you doing to impact somebody else's life for Christ? It's the only thing that's going to matter 100 years from now is what you did for Jesus and whose life you impacted for his sake. So I wonder tonight. You ready? He's coming. The preacher I'm saved, but I'm not ready to go. Well, you need to get ready. Because he's coming. And he could come back. Even this very hour. So let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get your guitar and pick out something. Maybe God put somebody on your heart. You need to come pray for them. Pray God to save them. Maybe you need to come and Get your heart ready. Maybe you need to come. God spoke to you about something else. Folks are coming. He's speaking out of guitar. Father, come and let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we live in volatile times, but they're exciting times for the believer as we know that your imminent return's at hand. So God, help us in these days to shine as lights. Help us to point folks to Jesus. Help us keep our eye on the eastern sky. And oh, God, help us to make an impact and a difference in somebody else's life. And God, have your way in this invitation. Already folks of Cain, 
God, whatever they're praying about, help them. God, I pray for anybody here tonight unsaved. Tonight would be the night of their salvation. Bless this invitation. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.